In this video, we'll talk about five reasons why people hate writing unit tests. If this is your first time here, this is Left Code. I'm Andrew. I've ran through all kinds of different scenarios, testing with projects that didn't have tests, with projects that did have tests. I've seen all kinds of scenarios. I haven't always been on the testing bandwagon. Slowly but surely, that changed, and I enjoy writing tests now. I enjoy helping people write tests now. Just seeing that light bulb go off when they figure out that writing tests actually helps them do their job. The first reason why people don't like writing unit tests is actually probably the one that might get the most hate, but that's because your code is probably bad. It doesn't mean you wrote bad code. It doesn't mean it doesn't functionally work. It just means that there's something bad about that code that makes it really hard to test. That could be that you have 13,000 lines in a function. It could mean that you're not properly using interfaces. Your class, your class structure could be bad, your function names could be bad. There just could be a whole lot of reasons why your test code isn't good. But generally when people say that they can't test or don't like to test, it's because the code is not set up to be testable. Writing unit tests can help bring that code back to make it better to work with. And honestly, if it's got 13,000 lines of code, you're probably going to want tests because you probably don't have any idea what it's actually doing in those functions. If you want to hear any more details about any of these things or how to fix them, leave me a message in the comments if you have one that wasn't on this list too. The second thing is really any of these reports or metrics that you know managers might come up with or senior leadership might have, and that's like code coverage reports. You know, you see them and you think, man, those code coverage reports are super valuable, but they don't tell you much of anything about the code. They don't tell you much of anything about the test. All the code coverage report will tell you is that you've, you have a test that has some way of exercising the code. That doesn't necessarily mean it's helpful. I've seen people write tests that call the main of the function and then magically go through every different piece of the app. It was called a unit test, but there was nothing unit testing about it. It didn't tell you if the app worked properly. It, all they had done was made it execute all the lines of code. You're gonna pass the code coverage, but it does get frustrating when you're starting to write tests and people are hammering you on, you need 50% code coverage, you need 60% code coverage. Depending on the type of app you're making, those numbers may be realistic or they may not be. The third reason why people usually hate writing unit tests is that they just don't know how. They don't have the experience with it, they haven't tried, they haven't used the frameworks, They just have no experience with it. It's kind of a fear of being new. It's not that they, they don't really dislike unit tests, but they say it's a waste of time. It's probably just because they aren't familiar with it. When you start using unit tests, it can be a lot to be like, well, what do I actually test? Why am I doing this? Isn't this just literally wasting time because I have to go write 10,000 tests if the code doesn't have any tests? It isn't so much that you should go back and rewrite tests for all the functionality that existed in the app before you started working on it. But when you go to work on a new feature, if you start writing those tests while you're writing new features, you can you can almost guarantee your feature works right away and kind of start building those tests in some of those areas that you're refactoring or working in. You get a lot more value out of those tests because that's functionality that you're just building compared to going back and just finding functions that you can test. I mean, you can do it, but it's better to find functions that have bugs, write tests around those, because it's breaking in production, so obviously you need to test around it. Or you can go find just new features and start writing tests around those. If this video is providing you value, please hit the like button. Um, it helps out the channel. And uh, also subscribe so you can see more videos. The fourth reason why people don't like writing unit tests is probably the added complexity of writing unit tests. And depending on what your familiarity is with writing unit tests, there's a lot of different things that can go into writing unit tests. There's interfaces, there's dependency injection, they're splitting up your classes and your API so they all make sense when you write those tests. A lot of those things go away when you don't write tests, but that doesn't mean your code's better. People don't like writing interfaces because it makes it harder to find you know, where your code's at. Well, that's good and that's bad. Um, usually when those interfaces are created, they one help you test your app actually faster because you can mock data and do things like that. So really what you want is you want some of those things that unit testing brings. You just don't know why until you start using them. As soon as you start using dependency injection, you won't want to give it up because it gives you so much more flexibility with how you interact with things. You can switch loggers out because you're using an interface. You know it's going to work as soon as you switch it out. It doesn't really affect anything. You can switch out your data layer. There's just all these different things that you can do once you have those interfaces, but it takes a while to build those in and build those up. Those aren't patterns that you just start out with when you come out of school. Number five, but probably the most important reason why people hate writing unit tests is they test last. 
So I know there's like TDD and there's design driven and all these other ways of doing tests. It doesn't really matter as long as you think about your tests, say, how am I going to test this thing? Not, you don't have to put like a test plan out, but at least think in your head, like, how am I going to test this? It's, it's a lot easier to go through and write your code and kind of have a test ready, um, write one test at a time for each thing you need to do. And you know, when they all turn green, you're done. Um, it makes it a whole lot easier. You don't need to write the test first, write the entire test plan out, you know, start doing pseudocode, all those things. Um, as long as you kind of have an idea of what you're going to test and what you're going to write, you can go ahead and write the code and just know, like, these are the things I need to hit, and then go back and look for edge cases. You don't need to spend a whole lot of time writing tests. If you spend five minutes writing the code, you might spend one or two minutes writing the tests. If you have to do a lot of setup and a lot of mocking, that can add to the time in the test. But generally, you know, a lot of that stuff can be copy and paste from other tests. So if you have a test that already exists that mocks up data, a lot of that is probably overlap. A lot of these reasons why people dislike writing tests, they might not know how to make their code work with tests. They might not know, you know, what things to look for in a good test. When you're trying to just do a whole ton of tests, it's really not that fun. If you write your code in a way where you say, how can I automate my testing? You can just see all the value you're getting. So I hope you guys found value in this video and you guys can check out some more of my videos on my channel.